So here's the installation of the Admiral RX 600 SP. So a couple things to note there. Um, what you want to do is make sure that that receiver is in straight line with the, um, the center line of the fuselage, right? You don't want to have it, uh, uh, you know, uh, tilted, uh, you know, so that's uh, not quite uh, centered there, right? Straight up and down with the uh, pins at the back. Um, and if you notice here, not only do I have, um, I don't know if you can see it there or not, not only do I have uh, a piece of uh, two-sided uh, foam tape, but I also put a bead of glue around the bottom there. So uh, the reason for that is you, you'd want that receiver to be solid um, with respect to the airplane. You don't want it bouncing around or anything like that, any kind of vibration, right? It has to be one with the airplane. The other thing is on the antennas, they need to be 90 degrees, right? So sometimes a little bit hard when you have a small plane like one of these 64 millimeter um, jets, okay? Um, but that's basically the mounting uh, that we want to do there. So now we'll talk about the gains on the uh, RX 600 SP. So you can see here's here's one that's in the package still. Uh, you know, obviously there's no there's no instructions with that, but hopefully you can see that those three uh, uh, pots right there on the left hand side um, you can see that basically they're uh, straight up and down right from the factory so those pots will rotate about 240 degrees so I've got another one here that I've got out of the package uh, if I can get it to zoom in um, and I can hold the camera right basically they're set at about 120 degrees okay out of the 240 so it'll rotate uh, counterclockwise for lower gain and clockwise for more gain, right? And you can see that right there, okay? So what we'll do next, uh, and well, before we do that, if you go with these settings and you put it into your plane, uh, my experience has been that in the Pandora that you see right there that's out of focus, uh, that plane will, um, the elevator will go up and down as you take off and you'll porpoise uh, with the gyro on setting, okay? And there's a video that I made earlier that's posted uh, on my YouTube channel that shows uh, that gyro on and what it does. Mm -hmm. For like a 64 millimeter um, jet, right? This one, and then also um, I have a, uh, as you probably saw, I have a, a, a F, uh, 9F, F9F, okay? Uh, both of these, when I had the gyro set with factory settings, um, they would get up, once you get to 50% uh, on the throttle, you would get a lot of this, a lot of aileron uh, or wing flapping, okay? Uh, and it was pretty, pretty erratic. So, um, so that's what you get out of the box if you do nothing with those, with those um, pot settings on, on, the, uh, on the gains. So uh, in the next video, I'll go through uh, the process that Motion RC uh, talked about, and uh, we'll walk through how, how to set those gains. Okay. Okay, back again on the uh, gain. So you probably noticed this uh, F9F has seen better days. Um, actually, that was the plane that I got the uh, the gyro on uh, stabilization actually working. Okay, um, but the little mishap was uh, pilot error. Uh, let the uh, airspeed get too low. Uh, trying to make um, turn on final and uh, just bow it into the ground. So I'm, I'm still learning, uh, just trying to, uh, well, learning to fly and, and also learning the School of Hard Knocks here. So I'm trying to share some of what I learned so that others won't have to go through the School of Hard Knocks that I've done. So anyways, that's the story on that. So back to the gyro gain. Um, according to Motion RC, you want to turn the gains clockwise until you have movement and then you turn them counterclockwise until that movement stops, and then you turn one-eighth uh, uh, of a turn to uh, clockwise, uh, and then test fly, okay? So we'll do that process uh, for this F-86, okay? Um, it's, uh, we got our little uh, receiver in there. It's got the standard settings uh, right in there, if you can see that, okay? And we're going to power it up and uh, uh, make adjustments here. Um, one thing I am going to do before I start that is this F-86 does not have a rudder, okay? 
So I'm going to disable the rudder gain and turn it all the way counterclockwise so basically it's off. Because I don't want to take any chance there's any kind of mixing or anything like that. So I turn the rudder off. Okay, so now all we have to do is worry about the, um, uh, the ailerons and the elevator. Okay, so uh, let me put this down and get the power applied here. Bear with me just a second. Okay. So here with the, um, the green and red blinking, uh, you can go through the, um, uh, the receiver manual. But basically, if you have the alternating green and red, it's on recovery mode. So let me switch that to um, gyro mode on. Okay, so with solid green, uh, the gyro mode is on. Okay, so now um, what I'm going to do is let me go ahead and follow the instructions. And on the aileron, I'm going to turn this all the way counterclockwise. And... You can, you can hear just barely that the servo is moving just a hair, okay? So let me add a little bit more. Now we're starting to hear it. Okay, I don't really see much deflection on the, on the wings yet, okay? Now, now you can hear it. You can see the deflection there. Okay. So we're starting to get the deflection. Okay, I'm going to back it off just uh, till it stops again. So I'm going counterclockwise. And I'm not having to turn much. I mean, you can, you can look down there and see that the, the rudder is off, right? And then here's the aileron right there. And it's not much of a turn. Okay. So let's see what we got. We got just a little bit. So let me add just a hair more in there. And this is what we'll test fly with. So here you can see that I uh, just added just a little bit. So you can see there's not much, uh, you know, if the rudder is at zero degrees, this aileron is maybe like 40, 40 degrees from, from off. Okay, something like that. So it's not a lot. Okay. For the elevator, you, you can hear the elevator is active a little bit. You can actually see it moving there, right? If you can see it in the video here. But uh, let me just add a little bit to it. Actually, it, I, sorry, I didn't, I didn't uh, move it from the normal setting. So it was all the way in the middle. So I'll turn it off. And now I get nothing. So let me go ahead and add back in. I'll give it maybe 40% from zero. You can hear a little bit, but there's not a lot of movement there. All right, you can see the servo. So let me put it back to where it was for the factory setting. Okay. Uh, here, we'll basically put this... Uh, right there so it's about 120 degrees if you will hopefully you can see that next to the green light there and now you can you can see it moving quite a bit there okay well it's starting to move quite a bit so I think that the factory setting at least for the um, 64 millimeter uh, I think is probably good I have I, when I flew it with the uh, uh, F9F. I didn't have any problems with the uh, it porpoising or anything like that, so that was good. Okay, um, but uh, for the 64 millimeters, the aileron definitely needs to be set somewhere, you know, in that vicinity, uh, right there. Okay, uh, it should look like that. It should not look like that. Okay, if it does, then you're going to get your wings shaking. Okay, so. That would be the basic, you know, starting setting for 64 millimeter EDF. Um, 
and then you know, obviously you test fly and and you know hopefully that that works well for you there's no oscillation and and you get some uh, uh, stabilization out of the gyro for that Pandora as I mentioned earlier if you have this setting right here okay where it's 50% basically 120 degrees uh, that will not work for a Pandora so we didn't see any uh, uh, I didn't see any uh, wings uh, wobbling or oscillating but the elevator definitely did okay so that's how you how you set it uh, and you go test fly and and uh, you know, hopefully things go good. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll make some more uh, lessons learned videos that uh, hopefully others can learn from my uh, school of hard knocks and not have to go through the same thing that I've done. So actually this one, this one right here is number two. <laughs> and uh, you know, trying to, trying to uh, not crash these things as much. So anyways, thanks for watching.